for you to be able to prioritize your tax properly, it is very essential and ideal that we give you some tips in order to, for you to know how to manage your time and do your prioritization properly. So uh, the first and most important aspect to be talking about this is the importance of time management skills. With the proper time management, you could better your performance, you could deliver a tax on time, uh, it will help you with less stress, you improve the quality of your work, the efficiency of your work, and your productivity will be increased also. You have a better work and life balance because if you manage your time properly, you discover that you 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 are able to complete your tasks at hand properly. And also with the proper time and skills, uh, you discover that your team will grow. Moving forward, uh, we'll be exposing you to a few time management uh, methods. First and foremost, uh, it is expected that you have all gone through the uh, tutorial exercise. And as such, I expect you to be prepared and I'll ask you questions this morning. Also, talking about time management too, we expect you to follow the 8020 rule, which we have embedded uh, a link to help you further understand what the 8020 rule. And you can you can follow this matrix also, which is delegated, deleted, delegated, do it now or default. You arrange your tasks and you look at which of the tasks is not important, which should I delegate to other team members, which should I carry out now, and which should I defer. There's also a technique where you get to choose the tasks you need to get done. You set a timer. Okay, you set a timer, you focus on the time. Means uh, you take a break and you repeat one or two. It depends on which of the time management method you want to you want to work with. But there are a lot of time management method, and we have also embedded a link here where you can get to familiarize with with different time management method that that works for you. Moving forward, uh, we'll also be talking about prioritization guide. Par by prioritization, we mean uh, ranking your your tax. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, by prioritization, we mean ranking your tax and uh, setting which of the tax is more important, less important, and which one is more relevant. So the first thing. Okay, am I audible now? Okay, the first thing for you to do in prioritizing your tax is to decide which tax is most important to you. Most likely when you get your, your ideal job after the training, you, 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 you get to a stage where you get a lot of tax on your desk. And obviously, it's very important for you to respond to the ones that are most important. And in order for you to do that, you need to prioritize this tax. So the first thing is to decide which of the tasks are more important. You write your priorities, which which should come first, second, third, or fourth, or so on. Then you should, it's, it's always it's also advised that your tax should be in a calendar. Then we we also advise you you guys to set boundaries. You should focus on your tax on your daily tax. You shouldn't take a tax of of next week and start doing it now you should always do a tax that is very important and very urgent <laughs> moving forward uh it is it is very important that uh when you when you when you get an ideal rule you obviously need to communicate with other team members in the organization and most recently in the digital age the most uh professional way of communicating is through the email so at such, it's very important you know how to communicate using the email. So the first step I advise you is anytime you're responding to an email, you use a direct subject line. You use a professional written. You don't use good morning, good afternoon. You address here, there. You address the office according. And it's very important to reply to all your emails. You can get an email which you feel is not important, and you feel you don't have to respond. 
professionally, we advise that you respond, even if it's by saying acknowledge, receive, thank you. Just make sure you reply to all your emails. Also, before you send any email, we we'll advise you to proofread the first person sent. By proofreading, we you do this to avoid grammatical error and to ensure that your uh, your email is well spelled out. Alternatively, you can advise you to use paraphrasing tools or, or grammar checking applications. <laughs> also, add the email you add the email address after you compose the message to avoid accidentally sending an email before you finish typing. It is very important to, to do this because most times when you're sending an email and you've already attached the sender's email, mistakenly or accidentally, you can just click on send and it will go up with. But when you attach the email at the end, it is before if you wait and attach the email in the end, if you simply press the send, automatically the email will not deliver to anyone, and which is an uh, advantage to your end. It's very important for you to open to check the recipient email, we use fonts, simple fonts on site. You don't, you're not a graphic designer, so obviously you don't need to design your email. Now you should consider your tone. Your tone should be professional, it shouldn't be informal, it shouldn't be personal, it should be professional tone. You send an email professionally. Also, you ensure that you CC all the relevant recipients. Assuming you are sending an email and the email is not going to one particular destination. Since the times that you see the relevant people, and lastly, it is it is it is also very important to keep your email brief at the point. Moving forward, the task for this week exercise, which is the most important aspect we'll be talking about this morning, is Let's assume you the join a, a company as the chief of staff to the CEO. By chief of staff, you mean like your personal assistant to the CEO, and you carry out tasks on behalf of the CEO. You were hired. You were hired because of your engineering background to support the CEO. You are picking over for someone who just quits the job over the weekend, and the CEO does not have time to brief you for the new role. Rather, you are just picking over the new box. What you do with this clear statement is you have just been hired and the person you are filling his or her role has just uh, quit, quit their work and you took over over the weekend and the CEO does not have time to brief you. So automatically you are just employed and you are given the tax take over the company's new box. At the moment, the CEO will expect you to answer all the emails and response to respond and flag email and forward any messages to other departments which are uh, supposed to receive it. The organization has four basic offices, four other offices, which is chief finance financial officer, which are the finances administration and legal staff. <coughs> the chief uh, product officer, which are those uh, products, market fit and PR, and we have the chief operation officer, which are those the operations and log um, logistics. Okay, Margaret, you can go on and speak. Um, I'm a bit confused on the second point. So, uh, you uh, you're hired because of your engineering background and the CEO has a technical background. What exactly is okay, the difference? Okay. It's a bit big. Uh, I'll come back to that. Okay, thanks. So, uh, okay, no problem. So as I was saying, uh, you, just take, you just took over uh, from, your, from, from someone who, who stopped working over the weekend. And because you have a very good engineering background, which the company focuses on engineering, it is expected that any email coming into the organization, you are uh, you, in the best position to answer those emails. So the company has four other offices, which is the chief technological officer, the chief operating officer, the chief product officer, and the chief financial officer. So 
And at that moment, your company is expecting several important emails from different, from different investors. Some of these emails will be very important to the future of the company, while others will be less important, but will play a very crucial role. However, you have just arrived at your desk in the morning, and your CEO wants to meet with any of these chief offices. By that, by that time, your single guidance from your CEO is that she wants all the essential emails to be cleared. So the basic and the most important point you should be looking out for is you are you you want to clear all the inbox, all the mails that will be received by the company. You want to clear it by either answering the mail, replying, or forwarding it to the relevant uh, position. So at the moment, your CEO expects you that. The CEO expects you to have cleared all the inbox and address uh, and, and forwarded all the mail to the right channel. And you are expected to be in the shoe of the CEO and either correspond to the email by saying, okay, this email is important, this is not important, uh, this is flag, this I have uh, forwarded it to the chief finance officer, I have forwarded this to. So it is very important. At the moment, your task is just to, uh, to prioritize this task and to, to see the one that is important, the one that is more important, and forward uh, for the emails respectively to the, of the, to the positions that will assign to them. So, <coughs> currently, your task is to respond to all these emails on the app. Okay? Currently, your task is to respond to these emails on our behalf. This includes prioritizing which email to respond to, to write email text, and to correctly decide on action of each email. So after this exercise, I will share the document that contains the email, uh, that contains all the emails in the inbox to you, and your task is just to respond and prioritize which one is important, which one is not important. And your task is also to hold uh, relevant emails to the relevant offices. And immediately after the call, when we share the document, uh, an hour later, we'll be expecting that your submission is ready. So if you have any questions, you can just go on and just ask immediately. So what were this, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get what the, what the actual three things we are supposed to do. Prioritize, send emails, or engage actions. I'm um, sorry, can I just take it up from here? Okay, okay, done. All right, all right guys. Good um, morning, good afternoon, everyone. So, because um, the first, um, the technical tutorial you had before this was delayed a little bit. So, what we're going to do is we're going to have our actual 30 minutes tutorial. So, we're going to take it from 10:30 UTC to. 11, 11 UTC, so we still have, let's say, about 15 minutes, so you don't have to rush. So back to Margaret's question, I'm going to get back to Fisa in a bit. Forget about the case study storyline or the roles for a moment. Forget about having a technical background or an engineering background. This is what we just want you to do. After this tutorial, by the end of this tutorial, if you go back to your folder, a document containing emails will be in that folder. So what you're supposed to do is just make a copy of that document. Do not work in that document. Make a copy for yourself. Then there are a series of emails there. Go through each of these emails because you're working on behalf of your CEO. Look at them, read them, and see which is supposed to be replied to immediately. So if there is an email saying they want so, 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 and so, and you think that, emails need, that email needs to be replied to immediately, reply to it on behalf of your CEO, write an actual email. But if you think that email doesn't need to be responded to, you just target the type ignored for later or flagged for later. If there's another email that needs to be forwarded, you can just put forwarded to maybe the CTO, the CFO, or the CPO. So just think of yourself as the CEO. What we're really testing here is to see how you can manage your time. That is answering about 15 plus email within one hour Secondly, to see if you can really prioritize these emails. Can you really identify the emails that need to be responded to immediately? Or can you really identify the emails that you think should be forwarded or ignored for later? 
So this is where prioritization comes to. You go through the emails and you ask yourself, which of these emails should I respond to immediately? And which should I ignore or which should I forward? So I think that has also answered Fisea's question, if that is correct. Yes, it does. Thank you very much. It is correct. Right. Very clear now. Yes, Alexander, there are emails that you can ignore and there are emails that you can forward. You just have to go through them, read them, and ask yourself, does this seem important? It's just like having a match. Oh, let me know it's a match now. Okay, like we're having this tutorial now. And then your friend is probably asking you to listen to a music. Which are you going to prioritize? Coming to this tutorial or going through the music recommendation your friend has asked you to check out? Because you know you can easily go back to that music. You're going to definitely prioritize this tutorial. And it's the same thing for normal emails, your day-to-day -day emails. If you're probably getting a newsletter subscription, you're not going to look at that. But if you get an email from Everest asking you to do something, for instance, you're going to attend to that. So you don't, don't overthink this and let's not confuse ourselves. What you're expected to do is just go through this document and reply to the emails that you think should be replied to immediately, forward the one you think you're supposed to forward, then ignore. You're not really going to your Gmail to write these emails. These emails are already be written down in this doc. What you're supposed to do is, if you're supposed to reply them, if you think that email needs to be replied, write the content, write your dear something, something, this, 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 put your remarks and say your bye-bye, go to the next email. So I'm trying to go through the chat box and I'll get to EMT now. Are we supposed to mark the emails? I don't think I understand that. How many maximum number of emails should you respond? Alexander, that is up to you and that is what we're really testing with this exercise. It is a time management um, exercise. So if you have whatever emails you're able to answer within the one hour, just submit, it's all good. Answer as many as possible. That is what we would advise. Yes, reply them in the doc. So empty now, go for it. What's your question? Uh, my question is not exactly about the exercise, but in general, uh, when yes, uh, it's uh, when when forwarding an email that I don't think uh, I think uh, um, like someone else should reply to, should should I reply to the person who sent an email like I'm going to forward this email to this person who is more. Uh, just right. If this, you think an email needs to be forwarded, may say to the CFO. Just write forward it to CFO. I move to the next stage. Okay. Um, how many emails are in there? When you get the documents, you check. How are we making the emails like? Is there an action to be used? What do you mean by action? When will the exercise start? So like I said, because we've kind of, um, the technical tutorial has kind of taken part of our time. So I'm going to give that grace in sort that we're going to really end this tutorial by, um, 11 UTC, so it means the due time will be 12 UTC. So you actually have your one hour. So nobody is going to say, oh, we didn't get the complete hours. We're going to really end this call in about 12 minutes. Then the next one hour, you do your tutorial. Sorry, you do your exercise, then you submit within that one hour. Um, Michael, please ask your question. Uh. Uh, have you just uh, added uh, some emails to be replayed on the document uh, and uh, made it self-explanatory, maybe? Yes, it is. <laughs> it is quite self. Um, it is easy to read. Um, like people asking where you will get the document. The moment this call ends, by the time you go to your folder, you will see the document containing these emails. So basically, there are just columns. They're saying this is the email content, and there is a column for you to reply. If you think that email needs to be responded to, you are you are helping your CEO. You are in charge of your CEO's inbox. You write on by on behalf of your CEO saying, "Dear this, in regards to this, 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 this is what you should do." Remarks, whatever the person name is, and if you think that email is not something you you need to respond to or maybe it is a private email, maybe it is between the CEO and the CEO's husband. For instance, you can just do ignore. You write ignore there. Um, if you think it is something that should be forwarded to the CPO, you write forwarded to the CPO. 
again, I just want to emphasize that you're not supposed to reply to all the meals. What we're really testing is your time management. How many meals can you respond to in an hour? And how can you really identify the emails that you can respond to immediately, flag for later, ignore or forward? So it is now left to you to take your first 10 minutes to go through all the emails, then identify the ones that you think can be responded to immediately or should be ignored or forwarded and things like that. Okay, thank you. All right. We have not shared the document yet. We have 10 more minutes. By the end of this call, the document will be shared. What kind of response can we give? The response you think your CEO will give. Um, Alexander. Yes, when we uh, when we forward the emails to one of the C suits, like the CFO, the CTO, uh, and so forth, uh, do, do we have like how do we how do we identify that it's it's it, the text or the email concerns uh, either the CTO, the CFO, or uh, others? Like, do we have to know the job description in order to just decide on that? That's a good question. Based on the templates that we're going to share, that are going to include these emails, from the content of the email, you can tell if it's so, if some if that um, email is for. Let me give ten academy for instance. If there are some questions that are asked, you know if that question is for Anastasia because that question is what technical. But if the question is careers related, you know it's either for me, Sadiq, or Maureen. Looking at the emails that we've dropped, we've copied. There are some emails that required. There are some emails that have been copied to the people that probably need attention to it. So if there's an email that probably talks about finances and then they copied the CEO and they also copied the CFO, the chief financial officer, it means you most likely have to forward that email to the CFO. Alexander, did you get that? I literally just Thank give you. you a cheat, like a cheat like that. Exactly. Thank yeah. you. I get it. Okay. So not now. We have eight more minutes. Yeah. Sorry, change on up to go. Okay, just go ahead. Is there a format we need to uh, have? PDF, PowerPoint slide? I'm sorry, I didn't get that. What is the format we are going to uh, submit? A PDF file? If you want to, but the thing is, once you go through that document that we've shared, just make a copy for yourself. It is important you make a copy for yourself and don't work in that document, please. Once you make a copy for yourself and you've replied to the emails, you can so <clears throat> you can <clears throat> sorry you can submit the G doc like that, the Google doc like that, or you save as a PDF, share the link, however you want. Just make sure you've submitted that document with your own response to the emails. Um, can I quickly just do a recap for Patrick that said went out for a minute? So basically, this exercise is testing your time management and prioritization skills. Time management in the sense that you have 15 plus emails that you're supposed to respond to within an hour. Prioritization in the sense that we want you to be able to identify the meals that you think should be responded to immediately, should be forwarded to the rightful owner of the meal, should be ignored or flagged for later. There is a document that is going to be shared in the next seven minutes. Once that document has been shared, please and please make a copy for yourself. Once you make a copy, do not work in the document. Once you make a copy for yourself, then you go through this email, spend the first 10 minutes, go through these emails, think of the one you think should be responded to immediately, respond to them, look at the ones you think should be forwarded to the respective um, person that will attend to. When you forward those emails, you can go through and see the ones that should be ignored. If you think an email should be ignored, you can write ignore. You don't need to write any other thing to it. If you think the email should be uh, flagged for later, you don't need to do anything to it, just write flag for later. And if you think those need to be responded to, then respond to it. That is it. We just want to really see what you can do within this one hour mark. So, Nathaniel, please ask your question. Patrick, did I do justice to the explanation? Yeah, I got it. So, are we going to do uh, to do it like like um, after six minutes, right? Late, late after this. Yes, the document will be shared after six minutes. Then you start working on it. Then you have one hour. Then by 12 UTC, sorry. Yes, by 12 UTC, you submit. Yes, that's the correct thing. So we have um, about six minutes. Nathaniel, Mohammed, Michael, ask your question. 
Uh, I have been late. Uh, I have been late, so no, wait, continue. in a nutshell, can you give me what you have discussed, what you have explained in this session, so I could understand? Okay, I'll do the nutshell when it's like three minutes, so let me get Nat Nell's question. Let me get Michael's question. I'll do I'll do a recap again. No worries. Nat Nell, what's your question? Uh, you can hear me, right? I can okay. hear you. My question is what if the email contains an immediate action? Like, for example, a bank slip. Uh, for most of the time, bank slips are signed by the CEO. And what if the email suggests that uh, the, that that needs an immediate action, like as soon as possible kind of immediate actions? What are we going to do with that email? Do what you think the, the CEO should do. So again, assume again, it's there is no, there is no like um, punishment for answering the wrong emails per se. The idea is to see what you can do in one hour and see how well you can prioritize. If you go through mails, you're thinking for your CEO now, and there is a mail saying something needs to be signed ASAP. What can you do as the CEO? You forward that email to who is in charge of stamping or signing that document. It is very easy. You don't need to overthink it. Read an email. See if you're supposed to respond to that email as the CEO. Does that email really need your attention? If it does, reply. If it doesn't need your attention, forward to it. If an email is talking about, um, I'm trying to look for a silly example. If an email is inviting you to, an, to a party, I mean, within the one hour mark, and the party is, is probably, let's say, a Christmas party, for instance, you can always flag for flag that for later, meaning that you go back to it later. Again, the idea is to see how many mails you can respond to within this one hour and see how well you prioritize them. Michael, we have three more minutes. In two minutes, I'm going to give a recap, and then Sadiq is going to share the document. Then you start working. Okay, you have said that we replay in a, a in a cell in a spreadsheet. Yeah. No. Spreadsheet? No. Okay. Uh, where, where, where are we supposed to submit the assignment? On okay. Google Classroom or? Yes, on Google Classroom. Once this call has ended, the document to be in your folder. What you need to do first things first is to make a copy of that document for yourself. Please do not work on the document. I'm saying that again. Please do not work on the document. Make a copy of that document then go through the emails reply them everything is already said that there's already a template saying this is the email this is the content of the email and there is a space saying that you should reply to this email or justify your reason for not replying to them and that can be that can be you've decided to flag it for later or you've decided to um what's it called you've decided to ignore it yes then when you do that, you go through the emails again and say the one that needs your attention. On behalf of the CEO, once you are done, in 10 minutes, um, 10 minutes to the um deadline, we're going to put a reminder saying you have 10 more minutes. When it's 12 UTC, you close the book, you close the folder. What am I saying? You close the document and submit. So you don't have to worry. So we have just two minutes. I'm going to give you a recap. Please ask other questions on the Slack group, on the Slack channel. Again, 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 what we're really testing for this exercise is your time management. How many mails can you really respond to within one hour? And how can you really prioritize these emails? Take your time, go through this doc. Go through this doc, look through the emails you think the CEO will need urgent attention to. You reply them. If you can't reply them, if you think it's really not your business, maybe they just copied you, then you can forward to all um who is supposed to see that email and if you think it's an email you can ignore ignore if you think it's an email you can flag for later write flag for later um it's one minute now i'm going to just end this call please go to your folder and see the doc make a copy for yourself please do not work on the document make a copy for yourself reply to these emails in one hour submit if you have more questions ask on the slack channel we are there to answer you so guys all the best um don't overthink it. Just go through the emails and see what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Um, yeah.